Hello, it's Gary Fox here, and uh, this is my homemade whiteboard. We're going to talk about, uh, today we're going to talk about energy storage, one form of it, and that is uh, basically storing the pressure. If you think about energy or work, work is, is energy, it's energy being used, it's force times the distance or pressure times volume uh, is another way of thinking about it and uh, so we're going to talk about three ways of thinking about a uh, capacitor because that's the main one we're going to talk about is a capacitor and electricity but I'm going to give you one analogy and then one really stupid analogy and then uh, one where we'll talk about the capacitor Okay, what we have here, we have a reservoir. We're just showing just the end of it. And there's a dam. It's blocking the water. And this water is sitting up here about 100 foot tall. And uh, the water right here at the bottom, it says, man, I'm getting squished. I would sure like to get out of here. If I can figure out a way of getting out of this place, I'm going to get out of it. So that's the initial setup for that particular scenario. Our second scenario is a battery. The way of thinking about a battery is it's a chemical pump. And it's pumping electrons over to one end of it. And over at the other end, there's a lack of electrons, which is the positive side. And I do the little bump on the battery. And uh, <laughs> that's basically how a battery works. Now, we're going to deal with electron flow. Uh, when we talk about it in this particular section because electrons are actually what really does the movement in most electricity however um, as you all know went through that whole scenario uh, there's electron flow and then there's what's called conventional flow and conventional flow flows from the positive to the negative but it's going to make a lot more sense this time to be talking about electron flow and then we can swap it backwards when we get done. So that's our second scenario. These little electrons sitting over here are saying, man I'd sure like to get out of here. This thing's got me all squished up and I, you know, I'm under pressure. I need to go. Pressure's votes. And we'll say this battery's a 10 volt battery just to give it a number. Okay, our final scenario is this boat. This boat is the USS uh, Battleship. Ah, I can't think of a funny name. It's a battleship. This is World War II kind of scenario. So these guys, these sailors, have been stuck out here on this boat for uh, about six months on maneuvers. And they are looking forward to getting off that boat. They are sick of looking at dudes. So <laughs> this boat has got a whole lot of pressure in there. These guys are getting gripey. They need to get off the boat. They'd like to see a little bit of land. So that's the issue here. These guys are trapped on this boat and they would really like to get off. So we got three scenarios. All three scenarios. We got uh, something that's under pressure. Something that would like to uh, go somewhere else. Okay, I've added a little bit more to each of these pictures, and uh, in the case of this this dam right here, we've got a valve right at the very bottom of it, and we've got a little garden hose, a little skinny hose, and it goes over to this long skinny tank. The skinny tank is greater than 100 foot tall, but it is fairly small diameter. It's basically a big pipe, in other words, sticking up. And uh, when this tank fills up, it will not affect, it will not take enough volume out of the dam, but it will affect the uh, level of the dam. And that's the reason why I made it fairly skinny. And I made the, uh, made the garden hose, and they're fairly skinny hose, because I don't want things to happen immediately. Uh, for this explanation that we're having right now. So, we have that valve. They 
get the garden hose connected, they open up the valve. So water starts coming into this thing, and then gradually, after a period of time, it might be a, up to 25%, let's say, and I'm guessing. That's about 25%. Now, as the water starts getting into this tank, this tank is starting to get under pressure. As it's getting under pressure, then there's less pressure differential in here, so the flow starts happening. So it takes a little bit longer to get the next 25%. So it gets there eventually. And now you got quite a bit more pressure. So it's going to take a little bit longer to get to the 75% place. But it gets there. And then eventually it'll get to where it's equal to what the dam, the dam is. So if we were to draw a graph of that. So right here is level. I'm sorry, flow. And here is time. There's going to be a maximum flow at the start, and then it starts dropping off until eventually there's no flow at all because it's the same level as the other one. So we end up with a curve that looks like this. Okay, if we were to draw the level, it looks like I'm going to be writing over myself, but that's fine. So we draw a level, and the level is going to be at zero but it's eventually going to start filling up and it'll fill up quicker and I start drawing my graph the wrong way. It'll fill up quickly but then it starts slowing down as it, as it gets closer and closer to the top and so the level will eventually get to the same other level but it'll take it a lot longer to get to this last 25% as it did the first 25% so on and so forth. So what we have is an exponential curve. If you've listened to my, read my uh, website, you know exponential is one that's used really often. Uh, it's, a, it's a famous curve. So anyhow, that's what's going on with that. So now we make the analogy with a capacitor. So now as we talk about the capacitor, first I need to talk a little bit about what happens inside a conductor. Uh, we've got this big piece of metal right here. And once we flip a switch and the electricity starts to flow in, on a good conductor, the electrons, they don't particularly like hanging around each other. So they will spread out on this, this thing and it can spread out very quickly because it's a good conductor. So basically, uh, the excess electrons can just kind of go from atom to atom. It's party, party, you know? So they can go from one place to another really easy. Since those electrons, uh, electrons don't particularly like hanging around each other, on the other side of this capacitor, we have an uh, insulator, and then we have another plate. These electrons having this charge are going to cause electrons here say, hey man, it's overcrowded here, even though it's not really overcrowded, but they say there's nothing over here, so man, let's head that way. So that's where they start going. So, as these electrons start filling this up, you start getting a charge in here. So if we draw a graph with charge, and this is time, we start out with zero charge, and then we gradually build up until we get maximum charge. Now, I drew it the wrong way again. It fills up quickly, and then it gradually goes out until it gets to uh, maximum charge. I'm not doing too good on these graphs. Looks a whole lot like what our level did in the uh, case of our tank. The amount of current that would flow will be, and let's see if we can find a better place to draw that graph. Here's current. We use our symbol I and time. 
going in this direction. When that switch is flown, thrown, current will be at max. And then it will start very quickly dropping off until it gets down to zero eventually. Because this charge will be equal to the charges on the battery. Actually, the voltage that builds up here will be equal to the voltage that's on the battery. So there's no pressure differential, no voltage differential. So it will start out high, almost like a short circuit. It actually will be a short circuit. And then it'll drop down. And the reason I said it would be a short circuit, that's why I put a resistor in here. Again, just like I did with the garden hose. Slow things down so that we can, uh, we can draw pretty graphs here. And uh, that would give us something that we're going to eventually call the time constant. So that's the case of the capacitor. The insulator, by the way, I think you know I've already said that, but an insulator will not allow electricity to flow between them. So this charge builds up on this plate, and this plate right here loses charge because even though it's going to lose charge, it's, it's uh, better off to move down here where there is no charge, or actually positive charge, lack of electrons. So the electron flow is going to go that way, and then come out of the battery up here to this plate. Talk about electron current. Okay, now let's go to the last one. Let's see if I can uh, step on that push pin. Okay, our last one. We got our boat. Our boat showed up at a port. These guys are going to be able to get off the boat. And they end up showing up to a little town, little island nation called Begonia. Because they don't particularly like the sailors, but they do like their money. And they end up in a little town called Rednecton, which is a bay village. So these guys are on this boat, and they got to take... They can't go right into the full harbor, so they have to come out and park out here in the ocean a little bit, and then they get carted to the village via a little boat, which I tried to draw here. So they go out in batches. And as they show up at Red Nectar, and the reason I gave it that name is that that village, these guys are like, oh, women, yeah, hey. So they're really attracted to that. Uh, the daddies right there don't particularly like these sellers so when they start showing up around as daughters all the daddies have got shotguns and uh, keep the sellers away from their daughters so these guys can get off the boat at least they're not around dudes and they can go check out the island and then go party at the uh, bars that are at the particular village but uh, that's about it so as the island starts filling up with these sailors as these boats go across, uh, if we look at the number of sailors, it's going to be a big number, a big flow. Sorry, it's going to be zero at the start. And then the sailors gradually going to fill up. Again, I drew it backwards <laughs> until eventually it's going to reach some equilibrium point. We look at the flow of sailors, number of sailors per hour, per hour, it starts out with a bunch, but then word gets back and hey, the daddies all got shotguns, and so the flow starts dropping off and eventually it's no less crowded on this little island than it is in the boat. So they might as well just stay on the boat. I can read a book here, you know, there. I still got to put up with all those other guys. So, again, exactly our same curve. We have our, uh, we have our ex exponential curve. It's called the exponential decay curve, actually. And uh, so the equations are the same. The same things going on. The energy that's being stored is the pressure. The pressure, let's go back to the, uh, the electrical one. Remember we compared volts to pressure. 
So the energy being stored in this thing is the pressure. This volts up here eventually gets to be, which is equated to charge, it's charge times the capacitance, is eventually going to be the same voltage as what's on this battery. So that is basically going to increase just like the charge did right here. Um, and so that's storing energy temporarily. Storing a charge. If we disconnect that switch after it charges up, that charge still stays on that capacitor. Ideally it would stay. And uh, we'll talk about real capacitors some other time. The charge would stay on the capacitor and it just stays there ready to do some work. Uh, if we touch the two leads together we get a spark and uh, or we can actually operate something for a short period of time and actually like the spark what I'm thinking of you see flashes on uh, cameras that's exactly what they do they build a charge on a capacitor and then when another switch is flipped that uh, lets that go to a flashlight, a flash bulb, strobe bulb, uh, that it makes a spark across it and makes the light that flashes that uh, blinds you when you're the dude in front of the camera. So that's the capacitor. Also, if you notice, we're going to apply a voltage right here at the start at time equals zero but the voltage takes a little bit of time to build up before it gets up to max and there's an equation the equation is if this is R and this has got a value of C the time constant is equal to R times C nice easy equation isn't it and uh, remember that the time V equals, in this case, the V across the capacitor is equal to E to the minus T over the time constant. So, at one time constant, it would be about 63%. And at five time constants, it's dang near 100%. It's not quite, but it's just about at five time constants. That's basically how a capacitor works. There's an analogy. Same analogy works for the uh, the tank. How it would build up a level, which is basically equal to pressure. Because as the level gets high, higher, it's got the same pressure. So it gets a full, the full tank here. It'd be the same pressure as the dam, and the flow would stop. So, the same equation happens. There is a time constant here. Hopefully, uh, this kind of explains things a little bit. It's one of two ways that you can store energy, and then once we get past that, uh, we get into some really interesting stuff. Appreciate you listening. Hopefully, uh, you got something out of it. <laughs>